I know some of you are going to look at this and say, oh, you're just looking for another excuse to crap on John Cena and his career and his legacy. So let me extend an olive branch to those of you that may be part of C Nation for whatever reason. Because maybe you grew up with it. You didn't know any better. Your parents did a bad job raising you. I don't know. Uh, here's some things I can't deny when it comes to Cena. It's hard to be the top guy for as long as he was. And whatever you feel about that, whatever you think about that, that has to carry some weight. And it wasn't entirely, totally unmerited. He was the top guy for a decade plus, if you want to be technical about it. That matters. That's significant. He certainly has millions of fans that believe he was or is an all-time great. I'll never deny this about Cena when it comes to the mic. He absolutely could deliver. Now, he's not somebody I would put in the top five or even top ten in terms of best talkers in my lifetime, but he's on the high end of the list. I'll never take that away from him, even if sometimes I thought the promos were corny and ineffective. His overall body of work in terms of what he could do on the microphone was fantastic. Uh, his matches certainly were very formulaic at times and often incredibly predictable, but the you can't wrestle shit I always thought was kind of dumb to some degree, right? Even when it was fun to, fun to kind of latch onto that. Um, in terms of making money, he was absolutely a massive major merchandise mover for a long, long time. And for a company like WWE, where that shit really matters, again, that carries some significant weight. And good or bad, John Cena came to define a generation of the WWE. That can't be argued. He's the face of that company. When you think about like 2005 to 2015-ish time frame, you think about Cena first before anybody else. So I've got to acknowledge those things before I get into what really matters here, what we're here to talk about, and that's how Roman Reigns clears John Cena, acknowledge that because he does. And to be quite frankly, I don't even see where this is close. I don't even see where there's much of a comparison, but reasonable people can have different opinions, disagree on it, whatever. But in this case, if you think John Cena is better than Roman Reigns or greater than Roman Reigns, you're just wrong. Roman was the guy in arguably the two most successful factions since evolution if we take the Breakfast Club out of the equation, because obviously that's on an entirely different stratosphere, but that's Hunter and Sean, and you got to throw Randy in there and Batista and Sheamus. Like, you can give me a fucking break here, right? Like, that is the ultimate power faction. But when you talk about on-screen factions, since evolution, you got the Shield and you got the Bloodline. And what's the one common theme in both of those groups? His name is Roman Reigns. John Cena has nothing that compares to that. I don't think anybody can deny this. Roman's a much better natural athlete and ring performer. And by quite a distance here. He really is. Like Roman's match catalog easily reigns over Cena's. There's no question in my mind about that. And I think it'd be dishonest if you try to pretend like they match up from a pure in-ring performance. And as many people now put such a premium on the ring performance, to me that would be the thing right there, full stop for a lot of fans that would make them say, yeah, Roman's better than John Cena by a huge distance. But beyond that, Roman is a better storyteller in the ring and as a character. Like One of Cena's strengths was not storytelling. His matches, characters, the programs and feuds that he was in, his storytelling ability was caca. Romans is infinitely better on so many levels. You can certainly be said that Cena would bring down other talent for his own benefit. See the Nexus 2010, see so many others. And as much as you want to blame Vince and WWE Machine for all of that, they certainly get a lot of the blame 
But at the end of the day, if Cena truly didn't want to do something, he could have put his foot down and he chose fucking not to because he was selfish. And by the time he finally started to want put up people over in a meaningful way, it was way too late and it just didn't matter as much. Meanwhile, Roman Reigns throughout his career has been infinitely more successful elevating talent so that others can benefit. You look no further than the bloodline that just that right there. Look at the trajectory of the careers of Jimmy Uso and Jey Uso and Solo Sokoa and they have how they have been positively impacted because of their direct association with Roman Reigns and the Roman Reigns character. I don't even see how this could be disputed. And as much as everybody wants to talk about like seen as a draw and he was a big star. He also drove away millions of fans and viewers during his decade of doom. Now you can make all types of excuses about changing viewing habits and blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. At some point in time, you got to stop with the excuses and say for his reign at the top, the numbers kept consistently trending and going downward in terms of viewership and especially in terms of live event attendance. Over the past few years, WWE's overall business is up and Roman's been the focal point of all of that. All of it. And think about this. How many wrestling fans talk about during Cena's decade of doom, that time at the top when he was the unquestioned guy, no matter who might come along and you try to usurp or challenge that spot, whether it's a Batista, whether it's a Punk or anybody else, the company was always going to make sure that Cena was the top guy. How many people look back at those times and talk about how terrible they were and how it was one of the worst stretches in WWE history? Yet now, over the past few years, how many fans are talking about a WWE boom period with Roman at the top? And you know there are going to be a number of people that are going to point to, well, that's due to Hunter, and, da, 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 and that bullshit just doesn't add up. Because for an extended period of time there, you still had Vince McMahon was the guy calling the shots, including Roman's change into the tribal chief and the head of the table. Vince was the top guy for a lot of that. So that excuse just doesn't work. John Cena was so incompetent, and that's the only way you could put it at the end of the day, whether you liked him or not. He was incompetent at being the relatable baby face that the fans could universally or mostly universally get behind. It wasn't fans just going rogue. It was Cena was bad at his fucking job. And again, as much as you want to blame the Vince and Titan Tower machine, at some point in time, you got to look at the performer and put the blame on their plate. It was so bad that the WWE had to shift their entire mindset and philosophy and start saying certain places that the fans are bizarro world. And they went above and beyond to edit out Cena's booze and pump in crowd noise that was cheers. They would always relentlessly peddle and push this propaganda well, it's a great thing about WWE. You could do whatever you want in the WWE universe. They had to come up with their own fucking narrative because Cena was failing so massively as a top baby face. They had to go into the reaction business. And some of you are going to say, well, Roman was heading down that track. And he absolutely was. And yet what happened? During the pandemic, he comes back with Vince in charge, mind you. And they go an entirely different direction. Roman demonstrated a versatility of character and performance as the top guy that Cena could never dream of, could never imagine. That matters, and that matters significantly. Excuses or reasons or fucking not. There's ultimately a reason Roman Reigns has had more WrestleMania main event matches. There's ultimately a reason that Roman Reigns is the one with the three plus year title reign. Something got from a historical standpoint that Cena can't touch and you would have never even fucking gotten close. And if you would have thought any guy would have done it after Hogan, that it would have been fucking Cena. And even the WWE said, we can't go there. That tells you something. The company's telling you something. 
And then when you look at Roman, what he did during the Thunderdome and pandemic era, carrying the company in a way that Cena, it just wouldn't have been possible. It's not even a knock on him, but that shit just wouldn't have worked. It worked wonderfully with Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns, in fact, is so great that a number of fans, a large number of fans, we might call them crybabies, thought Cody Rhodes was the guy that they wanted to beat Roman Reigns and win the world championship. Just think about that. Cody fucking Rhodes was who people were ranting and raving and raging about on the internet and wanting to see him face off against Roman again at WrestleMania and win the title. And that's not because they believe so strongly in Cody Rhodes. It's because of Roman Reigns. Look, I'm not saying you can't be a fan of John Cena. You do whatever the fuck you want. But don't be a ding-dong dumb dick like WWE and buy into their propaganda bullshit of Cena's the GOAT, Cena's the GOAT. By what measurement, by what standard? When he was at the top, business went down. And over the past few years, as Roman changed his character and changed the trajectory of his career, he's led a bit of a WWE mini boom and renaissance and something that a lot of people flat out refer to as a boom for WWE. You recently had them getting rid of the Titan Tron and the larger ramp setup because they wanted to put more fans in the fucking arenas. That is all a direct re representation of Roman Reigns. Meanwhile, how many times... With John Cena at the top, you would get to Raw or SmackDown or big pay-per-views and there would be thousands upon thousands of empty seats in the fucking arenas. They'd be tarping that shit off AEW style. Nah. I don't know what else to tell you at this point. But one fact is certainly obvious. Roman Reigns is greater than John Cena. Acknowledge that.